first, congratulations and thank you for your wonderful, wonderful film. And we are very sorry that you could not come and that you're not coming to our Kino Auto Festival. Uh, but thank you for taking your time anyway now. So. Thank you. Uh, I'm inviting the public also to ask a question, make a comment anytime you want. Just please raise your hand. Uh, but I will ask the first question. Okay. Um, you have made a very elaborate film. It, it, it works on many, many levels and it takes new turns uh, many times during the film. Um, it has a documentary feel, feel, but it's very, very directed also to the point that it becomes a musical sometimes. Um, at what point, how did it all come together or at what point did it become also a musical? Well, this film was born, the project was born from a collaboration that I had with Jorge Silva Mel, which is a Portuguese theater director but also cinema director, a, a, an old person. And he wanted to adapt a theater play that he made in 2005. It was a musical theater play uh, to cinema. And I started to write the, the script with him. And then he had some personal problems and he could not make the, the film. And we at Terra Trem, that's the collective uh, which I'm part of, uh, it's a production collective. We were uh, we were about to produce the film, and we decided that uh, uh, as I was inside the project already, I should uh, take over the direction of the film, and we started rewriting all together the the entire project because I had to adapt it to my way of working and my way of seeing film and seeing the world, and uh, and then. It was since the beginning there was this idea of having a musical part in the film, and when we were when we started writing it, we based ourselves in this uh, area in the north of Lisbon, the Povo de Santiria, it's an industrial area, and we started to, to have some conversations with workers, factory workers, that were unemployed and to know how, how, how it was going on, because there was, at this moment in 2014, 2015, there was a big, uh, very strong economical and political crisis in Portugal. So the, the, intim, the, the intimacy of people and all the, their lives was totally shaken. And um, from these conversations, we started elaborating, elaborating and writing the, the script all together. And then it, we realized uh, very quick that it wasn't only a film about uh, a factory that's about to, to, to close. It was also a, a bit a film about uh, our situation uh, as a country, as a region, as, a, as uh, in, being inside Europe. And in this uh, very particular political moment, an historical moment. So we wanted uh, to put ourselves uh, with our reasoning and with our questions also inside the film. When you were uh, working on the script, as you said, you were meeting uh, the, all these people, all these workers. Did you also make a cast uh, from them or how did you make the cast? Yeah, we made the cast. We decided to to make the, those two things at the same time. I mean, uh, we uh, made the casting as we were writing. And with the interviews that we made with the people that came to the casting, we just put some papers in uh, cafes and in the train stations to call for industrial workers that wanted to be part of a film. And those people that came, we had long conversations with them uh, which we shot in video. And from those conversations, from those stories, we wrote the, the scenes, the sequences from this material. So in the end, we end up by uh, choosing almost 80% of the people that came to the casting because there were so many actors and there weren't them, that many 
workers wanting to to be in a film. So yeah, it was both things at the same time, and we started as well to prepare to rehearse the the actors and to re rehearse uh, the moments, the dynamics, the some uh, parallel situations because the actors didn't have access to the script. I didn't want to give them all the information about the script, the script because I wanted them to keep some a fresh look on what we were doing. And I want them to realize and to discover each day of the shootings what we were about to do and to to react to that as we do it in normal life. You know? React to something that happens and you don't know exactly how to how to manage it interesting but it was like uh, improvisation then or you told them what the situation is and they reacted because on the other hand that the shots are very precise and uh, uh, it was everything was written even the dialogues it they were written but the actors didn't have access to what was written so we, me and the, the assistant director and the script, uh, uh, I don't know how, it calls it, how you the call it in English, the, the girl that, mm -hmm. that notes everything <laughs> at your side. And we were very trying to, to make them to arrive to what was written, you know, but they were improvising. And we all, at the beginning of the day, most of the scenes, it, it depended, some scenes were, uh, in this way, other were different, but uh, in the beginning of the day, we launched uh, the situation. We had more this approach of a uh, mise en situation than a mise en scène very uh, precise, you know? So we, we launched the situation and they improvised upon the situation that we launched. Mm -hmm. uh, and during the, the shootings, we tried to plan some dialogues some reactions to uh, each uh, actor individually to make the others react to that. And then the camera was there to, to capture you know, the, those reactions. Uh, but you have decided to shoot on 16 millimeter, uh, which is probably a little bit more hard because you cannot use so much uh, film. Uh, how come that you decided for the film stock? Well, uh, since the beginning, uh, it was my intention to film in 60 millimeters because my cinematographic culture is, well, it's based on that uh, texture, on that uh, materi materiality. And uh, all the films that I loved in my life, <laughs> most of them were shot in that uh, medium. So I want I really wanted to make that in 60 millimeters. At the same time, to have this method of approach to the to the to the mise en scène and to the actors, and shoot it in digital is very dangerous because you can end up with uh, tons and tons of material, and that the fact that we were shooting in 60 meter in 60 millimeters forced us to be very rigorous and we we could only shoot uh, some small bits of the situations that you that we were creating and we had to be like uh, to point uh, directly to what we want to to kill no <laughs> and so yeah yeah uh, perhaps a question from the audience or a comment Lahko tudi po slovensko, pa bom jaz prevedla. Mogoče. Uh, I will ask another question. Uh, uh, because your film, uh, as you probably also said, maybe with the film, and it, it is very modern. I mean, in a way that it's different from everything that it comes, but it also comes, you can feel it that it comes from some kind of tradition. You can feel... <laughs> I don't know, Cinema Verite or Godard, perhaps, or even Bertolt Brecht. Uh, what would you say would be the, your inspirations in cinema? Well, that's so hard to say. I never, I can never uh, answer that question when I'm asked. <laughs> uh, 
uh, it's very hard to say. I, I don't. I, 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 of course, there are all those references in the film, and there are some very straightforward qu quotations in the film, like uh, the the ending sequence in the where the Zé and Daniele, where they are close to this to the river and they are speaking about the world. That sequence is a direct quotation from from the film Cecilia. So the, the references, I think, they are very present uh, in the film. But also because we wanted to think uh, this object as a, uh, an object in, in communication with this uh, tradition of of cinema that you know there are. There are many films about the working class, and there are many f musical films about, uh, in fact, it is about the working class. So we wanted also to communicate with that tradition, and to uh, uh, and to somehow to not to, to in a continuous way, but to put ourselves outside in co and in collision with, with somehow with that tradition as well. So I don't know, but. I don't know. I can speak to you of so many films, so many people that made films. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot say. But in, I, I cannot. I can say to you that in 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 terms of of the 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 work with the actors, and I'm very inspired by the work of Casavets, of course, and the work of Robert Kramer as well. So. But it's only a part of. I don't know. Uh, in the beginning, when you said you were writing a script, you ma mentioned your production Terra Treme. Yeah. Uh, we actually have at Otok uh, two more films. We have John Africa also, and we have S High Cities of Bones, the okay. short film also in a program of uh, dedicated to the. European heritage of colonialism. So okay. it's a, it's both very different but very wonderful films again. So, uh, okay. But tell us about Terra Treme. It is something that is very present in the in the uh, film uh, community of Europe and also the world. It's very present at the festivals. Uh, but you work very much as you like to work. It's very interesting phenomena actually in Europe. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, we 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 are going to make ten years now. We we create uh, Terra Trem uh, in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, because we were finishing our studies. We were starting to work, and we didn't want to depend on a product, on a production, a big production house, and the big production structures. We wanted to make our own films. With the means that we had, a small camera, a car, a friend, uh, a, a micro, a, a mic, and, uh, and the the will and the urgence of starting doing things and starting filming the world, and, and so we got together these six people, and at the beginning we were able to make so many films because we with little money because we all we all collaborated in uh, in the films of each other no uh, i i was i had an idea and i invited these friends to make the camera and the sound and we started to make all these films and suddenly in 10 years we have like uh, 50 or 60 films something like that so it it happened that in the the last 3 4 years uh Terra Trem started to have a very big presence in the festivals and people were starting to be curious about what we were doing. But uh, yeah, we work in this way. And I think that uh, uh, the Nothing Factory somehow is a reflection on ourselves as well. And the discussions that we have are, uh, as, are part of the film also in the way that the, the way how you can organize yourselves to make your living. No? Perhaps now Perhaps a question. <laughs> then I will just uh, wrap it up. But I have another question because now you, you just um, led me to it. That 
uh, you have a collective uh, uh, hero in the film, but there is uh, the guy who is maybe the, the main hero, and, um, and he chooses rock and roll over guns. Uh, do you believe <laughs> rock and roll <laughs> or films can change anything in the world? Well, I think that guy is very, uh, that character is very dated, no? I think he's, a, he's someone from my generation, from the 90s, 80s, 90s. If it was a 20-year-old guy, probably he would um, choose a computer or a laptop or a synthesizer to, <laughs> to, to solve his problems. But in my generation, we, uh, comparing to the de generation of my parents that made the revolution and made the armed struggle against fascism and all that, uh, this, we believe, we tended to believe more in uh, electric guitars than in Kalashnikovs. But now, nowadays, I don't know anymore. <laughs> um, I would like to thank you very much. Uh, uh, the projection was super nice, and we're looking forward to see it again in in, in Isolight Kino Talk Festival. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. this conversation. Also, have Thank a, you. Have a good time and good luck. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.